<laughs> and welcome, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and we're we're, <laughs> we're keeping it. We're keeping it. Hi, everyone. This is your boy Brennan, also known as Some Brother Two. Welcome you guys to the very first Lonely G Cast. What that is is basically a bunch of us at TLTPG figured we like to BS and talk a lot of smack about Pokemon and other things, so why not put it on a podcast and put it out there for everyone else to hear? But, surprisingly, for episode one, I am not alone. I have a freaking cast. So I'm just going to go from the top in alphabetical order and introduce you. First up, we have Alejandro. What's up, guys? Next up, we have Anthony. Hello. How's it going, everyone? Next up, we have Mark. Good job, Mark. Okay, then we have Matt. Hey, everyone. And last but not least, we have the Prez, the man himself, Steven. Uh, I don't know where Mark... You forgot about Mark. No, we no, we called you... You're, we said your name, and like it was quiet for like five seconds. Your mic cut out. Yeah, your mic cut out, dog. Your mic cut out. Oh, anyways, I don't even know what I was going to say for my cool, like, what up or whatever, anyways. That was, <laughs> well, no one cares anyway, Mark. <laughs> But yeah, so we figured, like, uh, best way to start this off is, you know, a new game just came out, Ultra Sun and Moon, a few months back, and uh, what were your guys' thoughts on it? Like, who wants to go first and kind of chat about, like, what, what they felt with Ultra Sun and Moon? I'll just say I played this game last year, and uh, there was a couple of neat things they added, but other than that, I couldn't get past uh, the fact that it was literally the same exact game, so... To, to be fair, Mark, you had to play it six times because you kept falling asleep and letting your 3DS die. There's that, too, <laughs> and then there, yeah. Dude, there's, yeah, so... Dude, it was a mess. Yeah. Oh, where's where's the the like, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the story just because of the extra stuff they added, but it, because it was, like, if they would have just come out with Ultra Sun and Moon first and not had Sun and Moon, I think I would have enjoyed it, like, ten times better. Was. Exactly. It was a repeat, and with the extra content, like with the extra content, it was cool, but it added on, like, it, like I played through the whole main story. It took me forty hours to play through the main story. The fuck did you do? Yeah, it was no, it was thick, dude. I'm with him. It was. It was. It was, you're right. I fell asleep a lot. <laughs> no, it was. It was sick. I I tried to solo run. I solo ran the game after a point because LDL started. And it took me 40 hours. I finally got to the point where I had to trade in level 100 mons just so I could beat the Elite Four to get past everything. Man. You know what? It took me but like, 24, but it, the playthrough made it fun, and just thinking about that and farming random shit and hating like actual Pokemon RNG, and I got a Garchomp, it and it hard. took me like two days. <laughs> I probably. Uh, fainted or had more Pokemon killed than I have in a Pokemon game in a while. Yeah, like, but no, I... I'll admit that, too. Yeah, they that... Upped, I think they upped the difficulty. That's what I will Most say that's good about Ultra Sun and Moon. Um, it took until the start of LDL for me to finish playing through <laughs> Ultra Sun. Same. You're not gonna lie, me too. Um, because I had, like, barely beat the, um, the Elite Four when we were going through PT. And I was more focused on, you know, getting those solid Pokemon chains to uh, plow through the tournament. This this man, okay, for for a playthrough tournament, a playthrough tournament, a playthrough tournament, he went out and caught specific natures for his team, oh, yeah. just to be an asshole. <laughs> I, I tried. But I, it didn't work, and I was only willing to put so much effort into it. I, I caught but, nature, but I didn't go IVs. I only oh, did I went mods, and that was it. Only for their hidden abilities. That's what that was yeah, no, I went straight up for IVs and hidden abilities. Um, I mean, I used I carbos and stuff. I had power items, but... Uh, Y'all are freaking nuts, that's all I'm gonna say. I took uh, on a Metagross uh, with a Rabombi. <laughs> and won. Rabombi's hype. <laughs> Rabombi oh, is man. season 5 champion, you shut your face. But yeah, Dude, as, Rabombi now gets uh he gets sticky, sticky webs. webs. It's freaking yeah. legit. 
but he's but yeah, that, that's another thing. That's another thing with Ultra Sun and Moon. Ultra Sun and Moon added so many new move tutor moves that it's not even funny. It made so many half decent so mons much, decent. So much defog. So much defog. So much right. defog. Yeah, like I all like the Rotoms. Freaking all the liquidation. Like a Feraligator gets liquidation now. That's freaking hype. Yeah, freaking sticky webs. Oh, dude. Especially with the sheer force. Mm -hmm. and, the and now they're nice. and now on some sets. Dude, also, Como O deserves a good look now with the clanging scales. And uh, shit. I oh my. Know. Okay, Como O is freaking too powerful. Like seriously, it's so powerful. But I want. It has weaknesses that. I that can easily be easy. avoided. It, cause like no, that's. I agree with both of you. I I I agree that Como O used to suck, and now he's viable. But Anthony's right too. He's not like he's not overpowered. He's not. He can even if you get like a uh, that uh, his Z move down. Mm -hmm. You still have to face against like what a fairy type. You have to fight against a flying type, a dragon type, ice type. It has many weaknesses. But and then again, but then again, but then again, I, I with, with that I. Moon blast would would kill it even if with a plus one, uh, plus one. But I will say, but I will say this though. I will say this though. Yes, it has many weaknesses, especially a times four weakness. But then I throw in Tyranitar, and I show I, I always give that example. Or Dragonite, both of them have times four weaknesses, and they're and they're the pseudos, Salamence. and Salamence as well. But, that's the, but however, th that's the difference between Komo and those two uh, pseudo legendary. One of them has a, a, a really good ability, multi scale, and the other one is just bulky because of Sandstorm. And you're saying Komo-O oh, right. doesn't that's have? Another good ability, like, the Sandstorm takes the times four weakness to, like, something weird, like, what, like, 2.67 or something like that? A anyway, okay, so, so anyway, anyway, so, like, final thoughts on Ultra Sun and Moon. Was it a good game or not? I, well, I want to put my point in here about it, since I didn't say oh, anything about sorry. it. sorry. I enjoyed the game. I, I love the game. I don't know about many. I thought this one was like better than some of the other ones that was released, like uh, Omega Ruby, Apple Sapphire, um, what other uh, Poems remakes. Uh, I thought it was. Don't quote me on this. I thought it was better than uh, like Emerald and Arkle and Soul Silver. I, I still don't think it's like better than maybe Black and White Two and Platinum. In that in that sense, you just made a, you but just opened up a whole can of worms, bro. <laughs> that's gonna be that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> bro, silver, still silver was too far. Still silver was way too far, man. No, but, <laughs> well, like, like I said, well, well, that's another episode. That's another episode. But anyways, I enjoy the for what it is. I like that they added a lot of new stuff. I love the, the way how they changed some of the story up. I love how they made some of the boss battles a lot more difficult. I love I, I love the bonus one with uh, Rainbow Rocket. Rainbow Rocket, yeah. All the uh, former I haven't done that yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, just, I <laughs> love that yeah, part. I just um, that in. <laughs> but I agree with everyone else that it has its flaws. I mean, you're playing mm -hmm. the same game. I mean, I actually had a little bit of uh, trouble trying to play through like at least half of the game. But when, after I beat like a I think it was like the second or the no, it was the second uh, Kahuna that it started to pick up a bit. And you mean the thickness? A bit more. Yes, the thickness. <laughs> okay. It was a good game. It was a good game in 2016. Yep. It could have been a That's good game I'll in 2016. Thumbs it, down for the story. Thumbs up for the uh, added Keep content, the move tutors. I agree. The surfing was great. Like, if this had come out, if this had come out when Sun and Moon originally came out, it would have been a solid game. It, I think it, a lot of people would have. Yeah, I think it would have been better if it was like a, a DLC, but they don't really do DLCs. On no, the game, we're we're so still we're still or waiting or for the Battle or Frontier or in uh, in Oris. <laughs> or if they had the, uh, True. Sun True. and Moon, huh? an Ultra Sun and Moon, like two versions. Yeah. Of the Battle same two kind of lackluster, mm -hmm. like at the same time. If but I, and there was another thing that I had liked what they did that none of the other games did is adding new Pokemon. I mean, yeah, there were mainly uh, Ultra Beasts, 
They added five. The, thought, the, the thought counted. They, yeah, they added, it was something new. Uh, Poipol and uh, Poipol. Yeah, no, no. They zero or a uh, stack uh, attack. The Cephalon. They added in my favorite. And the uh, uh, Necros. My favorite Pokemon now. Stack attack. He uh, stack. He attack. He stack attack. And added the the new form, the Dusk form of uh, yeah, like a rock. I mean, I like it, but. I think it would have been better if it had better stats. Yeah, I would say it had it needed the stats the the uh, a bit more of the bulk from dust form while having the speed of the uh, mm -hmm. midday form. Yeah. Yeah, but see that was consistent with two thousand sixteen too, because all the lichen rocks are like disappointing. And uh, I still think the the dusk is a bit better is because you have tough claws on it. Yeah, and, and then drill so run. No guard too. Too slow, too slow, dude. I don't know. You okay. Just, it can't eat a hit like it needs to. Mm -hmm. You're right. We're getting caught up in some other. Exactly. Go to the other yeah. So so like like my yeah, like my topic. yeah my final thoughts. I, I agree with what Anthony said on so many levels. Agree with everyone. It was an awesome game. Story aside, if that had come, if this had come out instead of Sun and Moon, we would have had the perfect Pokemon game. Because there were so many added extra story content. There was all the move tutors, like we've said. If this had come out instead of Sun and Moon, this would have been the perfect Pokemon game they've ever produced so far. True. And I like Sun and Moon. Mm -hmm. You know, so... And I didn't hate this. Yeah, it's, like it's, 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 yeah. it was just disappointing to play the through the story. story. And, like, how the story ended, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was a bit better than the original Sun and Moon, in my opinion. In my opinion, but uh, yeah, it didn't make me pay enough attention though because it was like too much. This like is the, the same, too much the same. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So the subtle differences like went overlooked. In my opinion. The dialogue was so fucking dry. Oh, I know. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Eight hours to play it. Okay, all right, all right, all right. They had all right. Some pretty good dirty jokes. They had yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Moving on now. The second topic: Ultra Sun and Moon out of the way. This 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 is this going this is going to go deep now. This is a really deep subject. What got you all into right. Pokemon originally, and why is it that you still continue to play all these years later? Who wants to start? You want me to start? I guess I'll go. So, born the same year Pokemon the the games came out freaking love it it was it was destiny <laughs> but i originally got into pokemon thanks to my cousin and my cousin uh had pokemon cards and i thought that they were the coolest things in the entire world and then yeah, he was about like seven or eight years older than me and finally he's like you know what i'm getting too old to for these you can have my pokemon cards and it, once i once i got those i was hooked and my first Pokemon game, I'll never forget this, was I got that, uh, the Game Boy Advance SP, like that red one, with Pokemon Yellow. Mm -hmm. And it, it legit was amazing. I don't know what it is about Pokemon, but Pokemon just allows, it like brings me back to those awesome moments with my cousin. And uh, just unfortunately, my cousin did OD when, uh, about when he was 23 years old, or 22, 23 years old. And... I don't know, it's just like because it's just like that emotional connection that I do have with the game and with my cousin that just it just makes me happy. There's nothing bad about Pokemon that would make me not stop playing. Deep, man. Right? Like I said, this is some of this can yeah, go damn, deep. That is that's deep as fuck. Mine's not that deep. <laughs> I mean I mean everyone has their story, which is why I I think this is such a cool question to ask. Cause, he, cause, like, I mean, even to this day, you know, I, I, like, I started doing VGC competitively, and now it's led into me commentating for Utah Pokemon and stuff like that, and like, it's just, it's just amazing to see how just this simple fascination can grow into something so aggrandized. Cause, I mean, let's be honest, Pokemon's a, a game made for ten-year-olds, but here we are, twenty to thirty years old now, still playing the game. Sure. <laughs> Some of us may be older. <laughs> well, in my defense, I got into Pokemon when I was eight years old, and uh, a buddy of mine in, I believe it was like second or third grade, 
had Pokemon, and uh, it was cool as hell, like a cart game, like OG Red version, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, um, I, weird thing, my parents took me to a pawn shop to buy a musical instrument because I was in the getting into band or something, you know, some standard elementary school shit. You were buying a recorder. And, uh, they had like. Yeah, so, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think it was a clarinet for some reason. I was in, like, the actual band, not, like, the music class or mm -hmm. whatever, but, um, then, uh, they had a fat, one of those fat Game Boys and a copy of Blue Version there, and, uh, they got him to throw it in for the expense of the musical instrument or whatever, so I don't know if it was, like, a little bit additional money or something, but... Somehow I had Pokemon in Blue version that my friend had turned me on to. And uh, it's always been competitive because, like, growing up, it was every next version, once they finally were releasing them, um, me playing against him. So somehow I had to always get the upper hand on him. And it, I remember DNS genning and just, for some reason, you know, I played on Battlespot. When Battlespot came out, I... I didn't start going to BGC until like a couple years ago um but ever since then yeah and well it's funny Showdown is awesome and I love playing on Showdown because I could do it on my phone and just play competitive Pokemon wherever but um there used to be this thing called Shoddy Battle which was the literal same thing as Showdown and I even remember funny sets like what used to be OP, like, back in, like, Gen 1, Gen 2, and Belly Drum Charizard and stuff, and I don't know. Belly Drum on everything and throw every TM on Chansey. Well, yeah, yeah. More but like. the EVO light didn't exist, and I just, the way the game's transformed and, like, where it is just for, I guess, myself competitively and always trying to, I don't know, be better at something and, like, what is the epitome of the game and I've always thought it was battling so that's the point that's what you do throughout the entire game so why not be the best that you can be at that like no one ever was <laughs> weird spiel alright who's next I'll throw it out there alright um, let's see uh, I had an older brother so uh Oh god, I remember we went to go pick it up to from like the Best Buy, like six or seven years old, and like I I, ne I never understood the can the uh, the concept of uh, capturing the Pokemon. So I was like, oh, I would kill them and then think that I captured them only to be this. Um, but uh, I didn't like fully jump in until Gold and Silver when I finally was able to grasp the concept. Um. And, like, it just kind of stuck with me. It was one of those bonding things, you know? You just kind of like, oh, well, hey, you take the opposite version, and uh, we'll just duke it out and trade each other's Pokemon, and, and it's cool. Um, and he he kind of dropped off the gen, and uh, I, like, stuck with it, because I was like, oh, you know, this is kind of something that uh, I've enjoyed um, in my in my youth, and it, I don't know, it just, it just kind of stuck along. Um, but I think, I think the, the part of it that I like the most is that, uh, you know, it, it reminds me of, like, rock, paper, scissors meets chess. Um, <laughs> specifically because, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're swapping your Pokemon in and out and also trying to get the upper hand on your opponent. And it just, it just reminded me of chess. So that's how I re I've viewed it. I really enjoy strategy. It's been my thing. And I think Pokemon just, like, stuck with it. Um, that and... I think there's just uh, this other thing that uh, Pokemon remind me of people, um, because if you can bring the right group of people together, um, you know you you can achieve victory and and, and uh... take take down the things that you want to do. So yeah. it's always been something that like I've I personally found enjoyment um, playing Pokemon. So uh, yeah, that and. Um, uh, gen 5 is best gen. So just throwing that out there. Oh, and, get uh, fucked. <laughs> Hold on. No, okay. Oh my god. We, we're gonna have to. We're gonna just have to so, make a whole argument. So nice. We're gonna have to make a whole <laughs> argument. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That that was that was that was emotional. I thought I was my story was emotional, but damn. <laughs> but no, I just I just really like Pokemon. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Uh, Matt, Stephen, Anthony, any of you want to okay. go next? Okay. All right. So for me, uh, probably started a lot later than most of you. Um, my first actual Pokemon game was Pearl. Uh, so I was about 10 or 11. It's fucking 2004 or some uh, shit. <laughs> I got, I got a, a, a DS. I forget if it was for my birthday or something, and I didn't have a lot of games for it. And I've always kind of like liked the idea of Pokemon, but my parents weren't like too high on it. But one day I convinced them, you know, like it's not, it's not that bad, whatever, you know, just like <laughs> let me, let me, you know, let me play it and try it, you know, see, like you can see what you think. So, uh, so I got it, and I had a lot of fun. I think I took uh, Piplop the first time, um, and I played it a bunch. I beat it two or three times at least, uh, and I kind of stopped playing after that. I never ended up getting platinum. I really wanted to get platinum, but uh, we didn't have a ton of money and stuff. And... So anyway, uh, so I stopped playing pretty much all of Gen 5. I didn't get to have any of those games. Gen 6 rolls around, and a bunch of my friends in high school are like, hey, uh, you like Pokemon, right? I, I hear there's a new game coming out. And this was right after X and Y. And uh, so I went out on Kijiji and I got a 2DS and Pokemon X. And uh, and I remember my first memory with it was uh, New Year's Eve. We had a big like sleepover party and we all like battled, did multi battles and stuff. And it was great. And uh, I've like I've always liked the idea of Pokemon, even though I haven't always been able to play it. And now that I can all the time, I'm just taking every opportunity. <laughs> Even though sometimes, you know, I get burned out, whatever, but it's it's always something that's there because yeah, I like I like the uh, uh, strategy part of it and just like the yeah, the community part of it. You, you always find the people to play with. It's lots of fun to be just like bouncing off with other people too. Anthony, you wanna go? Anthony? All right, Prez, round it off for us. Yeah, Prez. Prez. For some reason, Brennan's mic like cuts out sometimes for me. Oh, uh, really? Oh, it weird. Does for me too. It's weird. At least, at least I'm recording this, and it's gonna right. come through perfectly. That's probably Very why cool. it cuts out. Swerve. Well, ah, oh, shit, man. I've been playing <laughs> pretty consistently since I was about seven years old the old brick with um, you old man yellow I think I, yeah I actually started on yellow yeah I'm old but I played brick yellow for for years actually until uh, gold and silver came out and I never got gold but I hopped on to silver I played through it I played through crystal I seriously played through everything until gen 4 because I was too broke to buy an actual DS but then whenever Soul Silver rolled around, I finally picked up a DS and uh, a copy of that. And Soul Silver is so much better than Ultra. Saiyan. <laughs> and Black Two White. It's it's especially Gen Five. But um, <coughs> I just kept playing from there. Uh, I played through Gen Five, Black and White, Black and White Two. Bought a 3DS for X actually. I wasn't even that excited for X to be honest because I saw the graphics. It looked really like looked like some Animal Crossing bullshit. I wasn't I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> Animal <I> saw, Crossing <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> like it just seemed way too a animated. Like I just was not feeling it at all. But then for those of you who know Trent, who have had the uh, pleasure of meeting that dude. Bunnelby Senpai. Yeah, Bunnelby Senpai. He, uh, he had the idea to get, like, ten together on Tumblr to, uh, use the PSS system, like, actually use it, you know, like the egg hatching and all that shit. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's kind of where I came in, because I was living with him at that moment. So... He suckered me into just joining the group because I, I seriously I was not feeling it. 
but uh, he kind of just guilted me into joining up. I, f I got kind of wrapped up in that because uh, everyone just started battling each other, like Kelvin, Shamar, uh, Kyron, Red. Like, everyone's just kind of duking it out with the shittiest Pokemon possible. And, I mean, it kind of just brought me back to why I always played it. Like, I always just fucking wanted to find somebody. Like, seriously, just a stranger. Like, if I saw, saw someone with a Game Boy, I'd ask him if they wanted the battle. Like, that's just always what I was about, even though I, ha I never had anything, like, super competitive. But I flaked out a little bit, and uh, I was really feeling it, so I kind of just took the ball and ran from there. And honestly, TLTPG is why I play Pokemon. I If it wasn't for the group, I probably wouldn't be playing, to be honest. But here we are, and I'm loving the shit out of it. Near four years, years later, uh, right? Twenty-one for the for the group. The years, or I mean, for the group, it's been what is it? Four and a half years, I believe. Was it thirteen, right? Established It'll be twenty five years in August. Yep, freaking established twenty thirteen. It's on. It's on the screen right now. Nothing's changed on the screen. Nice. Hmm. Steven, you forgot Ray. Anthony, are you there? Oh, God. Dragon. <laughs> no, I didn't. Believe me, I did not forget about Ray. I didn't so I that one guy who always caused the could. problem. Okay, I don't know, man. <laughs> We've been through so many people in the group. It's, it's, it's seriously... No, no, way back, OG, like, uh... It's unreal. Uh, uh, Andrew would always about bring him up. Fucking, uh... Uh, I can't remember his name, dude. I can't. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know the one. Yeah, I know what you mean. About. Um, but yeah, man, it's just, it's something I've always done. I, I don't know, man. It, it seriously just strikes every bit of a game that I, or everything about a game that I enjoy. I love strategy. I love competition. I love community. Taito, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, All right, Anthony. To throw some emphasis on community because that's it's what we're fucking doing. You're like, look at this. This is fucking Pokemon. How weird. <laughs> right. <laughs> Your twenty-five year olds dicking around. Right. Nothing better. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened to Anthony if he is still there. Nope. Okay, so I guess we're gonna we're gonna move on. Okay. Well, wait. Anthony, do you want to tell your story? Mm. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, okay, uh. All pretty much started when the TV show came out. I remember when I was a kid. And one of my friends was like, Hey, have you seen this tool show? Does that show up? I'm like, What show is it called? I'm like, it's Pokemon! I'm like, I've never heard of it. So I, I went ahead and, like, watched the show. And it, it was at, and it was in Japanese. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, Japan when I was a kid, and I watched it, and I didn't understand what they're saying, because there were no subtitles, but <laughs> I enjoyed the show. I thought it was funny. I thought it was silly, but also cool at the same time. And then when the dub came out, I watched it again, and I'm like, oh, so that's what they were saying. And then... I enjoyed the show uh, so much that I I, I <laughs> watched it almost every day, uh, and then I saw the commercial. The first one, of the first commercial it was actually rather. It was what was it? it was the one with, uh, when all the Pokemon goes onto that bus and they all gets transported into that Game Boy. Oh, oh that, yeah, that was. That's the original. That like that's the, the original movie. red and blue uh, trailer or commercial, I think. Yeah, that that was the trailer that I saw, 
and I'm like, I want to play this game, and then I ended up getting the game. I got what, the blue version, and I played it, and I and I enjoyed it. I played it like multiple times. I even like I played multiple times so much that I actually started all over times, and since then I played all the other uh, played the second version when it came out at a later date and then when the gen generation 3 came out with uh, Ruby and Sapphire that's when I started playing the game a bit more seriously played more uh, understanding what what's going down and played it to a point where I would play it a little bit more competitively and then that trans transition in, uh, towards in Generation 4. And I really enjoy Generation 4 the most. But then... Please, Gen 4 remakes. In, and I was like, I don't know. I I, I lost the, my enjoyment of Pokemon when Generation 5 came in. Despite the fact that I, I like the majority of, the po of those Pokemon that was introduced. But... I don't know. It it the game didn't catch me, so I ended up skipping Generation Six with X and Y. But but surprisingly enough, I started playing uh well Omega Ruby after Sapphire when it came out. So I don't know. It the 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 game that that started it all, and then up to now. It changed. Like there were many differences that changed, such as like very the color variations of some of them, uh, to some of them gaining new typings. Like when Magneton, Magnemite got steel type, I was like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, and then how um, when Fairy got introduced and when uh, the Waltz family. You got the fairy typing, I'm like, finally, I got, uh, now I can out-rival against al And, I don't know, every time I play that, uh, play Pokemon, one thing that comes to my mind is, how am I gonna play it? Am I gonna play it for fun? Am I gonna play it with rules? Am I gonna play it uh, very seriously to a point that I play it uh, comp competitively. So I don't know. It, I, I I love the game, and I also love the anime because the anime got me into the game, and I just like playing it every now and then. I I don't mind playing it every now and then because if I play it every day. I don't want to burn myself out. So, yeah, the burnouts suck. <laughs> they are the worst. Yeah, yeah. I, I I do something Pokemon related every single day in my life. Right. And that's not an exaggeration. Like whether it's group stuff, admin stuff, like I do something Pokemon related every day. Speaking of Pokemon related, because it's a good transition. The last subject we will be talking about today. Is something very, very special to every single person in this call or in this on this podcast. Because not only are we members of TLTPG, we are also coaches in the LDL. I am not just Brennan, Dumb Brother 2. I am the coach of the Salt Lake City Swamperts. And you have Alejandro, coach of the Lakewood Trevenant. You got Anthony, coach of the Victorville Victini. You got Mark. <laughs> you got Mark, coach of the Arizona Volcarona. What up? And you have Steven Prez, coach of the Russellville Rockets. Five oh. <clears throat> God damn, I hate you. And then last but not least, we have last season's champion, Matt in the Winnipeg Jellicent. Works out everybody. Yeah, so we're not, we're not repeating this year, but <laughs> what what's so cool for those of you guys that don't know what a draft league is? It's it's basically like a fantasy football league for Pokemon. 
It's the best way to kind of put it. And if if you guys have seen it, it's basically like the GBA, um, freaking UCL, and all that stuff, just with their own spin on things. And it's just within the group. And six seasons strong. Like I think season one started back in t- what 2016 or something like that. Shit, man, I really don't remember. It's I think it's been about two years or so since we started, which is really really cool. Uh, about two years. About two years now. So season six, it's like we're here. We're halfway through the season. It's we're on week six now, and I'm loving it. I'm loving this season. This is my favorite season so far. I really gotta say it's been my favorite season so far. Only because Not only because I'm winning, just because I don't know. I'm more familiar with everyone's play style. I feel like everyone picked teams they were pretty comfortable with. I don't know. I been pretty exciting. It's been refreshing to say the least. Exactly. It's such a different way of thinking and battling as well other than just like hopping on showdown going into OU UU or like VGC with double battles and all that stuff there's there's like it's its own it's its own meta that's built up through YouTube now and it's just something honestly just it's just the coolest format I could honestly think of of how to play and like the fact that's why you see a lot of the the biggest VGC streamers like starting to provide some oh right like uh yeah, let's see trash. wolf like wolf glick freaking uh cybertron aaron zang fuck man that's so awesome right it's it's like it, cuz it's literally catching on and just like every single season you get to have a new team and it may not go the way you like it you may have a crap team but still do amazing yeah. with it I have a crap team and do crap with it. Or you could be like Matt and have a crap team and just go and just do crap. Absolutely. But like like what are you guys think thinking of like this season so far? Like especially like some of the newer people, like like Alejandro. Like this is this is like technically your first season in LDL, right? But you've done yeah, other it's, But yeah, have you it's my first season technically. But um, you've done other draft league stuff right before, right? Um let's see, um I did some like crossover Turning in another group with mm-hmm. you guys, and that's how I found the group. Uh, but I did do RU, got to playoffs. That was pretty fun. Uh, yeah, but I uh, about that. yeah, but uh, getting uh, getting to this LDL thing, it's a whole other level because I mean, you know, you're not restricted to a specific tier of Pokemon. It's across the playing board, and you really have to know what you're working with in order to uh, you know make the best out of your team. So, um, been, been an interesting season so far. I keep, uh, you know, looking at different strategies to uh, um, move forward and look into my next battle. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, like seriously, like starting off, like I never thought LDL would grow to as it has been so far, uh, especially with this season, just because there's. It's- there's... It's definitely the the popular format in in the group. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's taken over. I never thought it would take over, but it really has. Yeah, and like freaking Blazing Squid, uh, Matt and I, like we really just kind of just pitched the idea one day, and we, yeah, pr- we had like a Google Drive Word document. We had all the rules on. Yeah, and it's just like it was just like it was just it's just like yeah, let's let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. And the fact that. It got so popular, and now we're in our sixth season, halfway through our sixth season. And the fact that I'm st- that that we're still having fun with it, and there's still salt being thrown around, there's still sh- like like shit talking going around, like there's plenty of salt to see. There, I'm oh sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> the salt is unreal. But like, 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 what is it? Like, what is it that like that you guys think makes draft league so? fun like well like what is it for you guys that like it's like that's what it is that's what brings me back that's why i watch them that's why i like to play like what is it for you guys it's because it yeah i know these guys like that's the thing like i know all of you it's so personal like i fucking love it i just i, I feed off each other's shit talking <laughs> and i don't know it's just every week is exciting yeah, if, yeah, I, I got, I gotta agree with you. Like every week, it's, it's a different mental game. It's a different thought process of who, like, how do you play? Usually, how do I know that you play? How can I beat you with this new team that I have? Or, like, can I even beat you? 
Like, like there are times where where I'm just like literally sitting there thinking, "There's no way I can win." And I still put I still put like five hours into team building. I think that's the best. I, I think that's the thing that I enjoy most, is that yeah, is that is I the agree. team building, because like like the fact that every single mon can do whatever you want. It can go back all the way to Gen three, for like a move tutor move, or like you can get some egg move from Gen four and put it on this Pokemon that you have, and it's it's something exciting because at that point it's yeah. like. There's there's endless possibilities. I really like the diversity of it for sure too, because it's it's a game trying to predict which poke opponents gonna bring, and then it's an entirely different thing bringing like predicting how they're gonna use those Pokemon, and then how mm-hmm. you're gonna respond with what Pokemon you have, and it's 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 like just regular singles battles just up a notch and I think that's the that's the thing is that draws so many people to it it's 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 like a mind game on top of a mind game and once that mind game oh. comes down you feel you feel like you feel like shit after a loss I'm not gonna lie <laughs> I think I'm I, 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 I've only, I've only had four of them. <laughs> but I like I think it's just like at this point now it's just like if because like depending on who you battle if you have that right mentality you can be okay but if it's just like some bullshit RNG hacks god hi Miguel how you doing kind Uh, of kind of nonsense (laughs) 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 you can handle you can handle the mental betrayal but yeah Uh, for me it's more of I don't know, I guess, like, how I play, I mean, at one point, it's like, I have a, I have a set, a, a idea of what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do next, and then, when that happens, everything goes haywire, and I don't know what to do next, and I lose confidence, and then I just, I just lose my, mo- my momentum to a point where it just screws me up. So, yeah, nothing this, goes to plan. This is my because this is my first first time doing this. Mm-hmm. First time doing this minus the uh, RU uh, draft. Uh, and initially, I was just gonna pick just mods I I really like. And then uh, Alondo and Jesse told me like about cores and whatnot. And, like, great. Now I just start uh, focusing on these cores and whatnot, and not. Just mods I like, and then I end up with some mixed bag of weather and and whatnot, and I don't know. It it it, it, it both has its pluses and minuses, and then when I try to build, it, it I just don't know where to go from there. I don't know which to bring, what to bring. And even when I bring the, the six, I'm trying to prep up every single mod that it that it expects to be brought in. It just comes with experience. Yeah, man. You, like you just can't you just can't worry about exactly. it. Exactly. Like and like you gotta be proactive instead of reactive too. Mm-hmm. I yeah, that's yeah, that's like the big thing. It's like when you start off, it's scary. It's all the mind games that gives you a headache. But literally, just the more you battle, the more you begin to understand. You know you know the team building process or even the drafting process the drafts alone are freaking terrible and, and frightening cuz if you don't get cuz it's like cuz you could have your whole entire draft planned out i'm going to get this mon this mon this mon this mon and if someone snipes you shout out to the season 5 pick um whoop, it literally ruins so your life and that's that's another thing when it came to if one mon was taken, you always need a backup one. Mm-hmm. If, like, the one mon, if you have, like, this set of mons and you have an idea of grabbing, always have a backup plan. Always try to make sure you have um, a, a mon that maybe have the similar typing or maybe the same stats or the same, like, ability and bolt that you're looking for or something like that. And try to go work from there. Because otherwise, it. It kind of screws you over. You don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. So, but I always, mean, always have a backup plan. I I, I will uh, say this though. Uh, I will say this though, Anthony. There is nothing wrong with you picking mons that you enjoy. Seriously, 
they're like there are still bonds to this day that I want to pick because I like them. And I do. Freaking, I have Jolteon on my team. Yes, it's a good Mon, but I enjoy it. Last season, I had Thunderous and Entei because I liked them. What's up, Mark? How are you enjoying them? <laughs> that Thunderous <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. While, while, while building cores is, kind of, is somewhat necessary, I'm not going to say it's like required. Like, seriously, you could have the most random-ass team, and if you know how to use those mons, that I feel like at, at times that's even better than having a core that you don't know about. Because right oh, yeah. now... Because, like, that's, like, one of my biggest things right now, because I have Mega Aggron. It's the slowest Mega. It's the slowest mon I've, I think I've ever drafted, I think, outside of Escavalier. And it is ridiculously difficult to to plan for because I'm always used to outspeeding and being hyper offensive and this season I like I'm trying to learn how to take a more defensive laid back kind of view of it and it, it mm. I'll tell you what it's it's difficult but if I have like a quick mon like Jolteon on my team or like I have say some awesome mon like Entei around I'm gonna be fine because I know that mon inside and out, so there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's where the fun comes is you can have a wonderful balance of both having like, kind of like that fire, water, grass core, dragon steel, a fairy with the mons that you enjoy. See, I feel I feel the opposite. Really? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm really good at my defensive and attacking to make sure that I guard against. Them. But like when it comes to pure offense, sometimes I on my face and I think I'm, I recognize that like in this LC current I'm trying to be more uh, familiarized with offense and now that we jumped into segue FPL shortly um, <laughs> FPL has kind of shown me like hey the power on your squad if you want to you know get those necessary kills um, it's a balance yeah so I mean, just finding the right balance. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're it's, pretty much right. Finding yeah, the right balance. it's finding that right balance that can better that allows you to feel comfortable with your team, and on top of that, allows you to play to your best ability. And at times, you learn a new battle style that you could that you don't really know prior. Whether it be hyper offensive, super defensive, stall uh, setups, or any of that. It like this. I feel like this definitely helps you understand that at such a different level because everything mm -hmm. can be customizable. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing that I've learned uh, with this draft is that I'm starting to use Mon, uh, Pokemon that I've never ever used before. Mm -hmm. like for instance, Tornadus uh, Incarnate. That Mon, I, I've never played it, I never used it, I never, I only used was the, I mean, no, not the Incarnate, the Therian. Therian, Therian is the one I, I've never used. Oh, I love it. The one I, I'm more familiar with, but I've never used, I never used it before, and surprisingly enough, it's been probably one of, uh, one of my best mons so far, uh, beside maybe Swampert and Nipipa. and then there's also Pelipper. I, I never really thought of using Pelipper. Sure, to Pelipper. No one then, thought Pelipper was good until Gen Mark, Seven. But here's Mark saying. Pelagod is one of the best mods out there, especially uh, since in Gen 7, it was introduced with Drizzle, uh, Drizzle so I can able to set up uh, rain, so that's another thing, and then I started uh, using uh, what else? There was another mod I, I, I tried, started trying to use. Dude, my uh, team is completely full of Pokemon I've never used before. Like, what? there's a couple that I have used, of course, but, man, like Escavalier, uh, Two Cannon, I a la a scavalier really is just... amazing. I love a scavalier on so many levels. And then there's it mega. So oh, that mug crazy. Gen five Pokemon. I was not expecting to use mega swapper. Uh, the the last thing I was expecting was the mega scissor, but I don't know. I, I felt like maybe if I had uh so something else other than uh initially king initially Kingdra, uh to work with uh, rain, I thought like uh, maybe to work with that. And Mark suggested Mega Swampert. That's because like, Mega oh, Swampert is an OG, and that's why he's my mascot. So, 
But yeah. Swampert is cool. It, 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 Salt Lake City, Mega Swampert? So he can, he can be whatever you want it to like, be, Matt. Thinking, it's like, you have the chance to uh, do your cores, and then there's also the part where you can use your favorite mod to do this, and then you're starting to use Pokemon that you've never used before. They've mm -hmm. never had a second thought or, or would never expect to use and mm -hmm. would probably end up being like really good on your team. Uh, that, that's the best part of LDL. I but mean, it's... just you're, you're forced to use Pokemon you're uncomfortable with and you form new, new, uh, just a newfound <laughs> respect okay. for a lot of Pokemon you've never used. Right, yeah. exactly. Well, on that note, uh, everyone... Uh, LDL Season 6, uh, Week 6 coming up. We have a lot of awesome battles going on. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the schedule here. Uh, first off, you have your boy, the Salt Lake City Swamperts, taking on the Victorville Victinis when we're going to smack some Mega Swampert ass. I'm going to let you know that right now. More like <laughs> Salt Lake City trash perks. I'm sorry, who won, who won our game week one? <laughs> Wait, who's the reigning champion? Uh, you have Russellville Rockets versus uh, Jesse and the uh, Boston Buzzwolves. Gonna go 6 0. You got. Gonna 6 0 to go 6 0. You got uh, Alejandro, coach of the Lakewood Trevenants, versus a new coach uh, this season as well, Carlos and the Iowa Cub Chews. You have uh, Blazing Squid and the T Toronto Totodiles versus Brandon and the Las Vegas Regigigas. Then you have uh, Mark, coach of the Arizona Volcaronas, versus his Arizona counterpart, coach Arthur, and the freaking uh, Phoenix Sunfloras. That's gonna be hype. Yeah, that's gonna that that's gonna be battle, battle of the week. Right I think that really will be, yeah. <laughs> and then you have, <laughs> and then of course you have Matt and the Winnipeg Jellicent going off against the Birmingham Steelix and Coach De. I can never say his name right. De Armis. J. De Aramis. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I really can't say your name. It's the uh, battle to see who will get the two wins first. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about time one of you do. Let's be honest. But yeah, you guys, if you honestly listen to like this whole freaking hour of this podcast, I do greatly thank you. Um, links to the the group Facebook page, uh, the LDL document, so you can go ahead and watch that, as well as our L as well as um, a link to our merch shop, which we have all of our the LDL coaches logos there now, which is so freaking awesome. I love the shirts. Buy the shirts, <laughs> and and we promise, and we, <laughs> and we promise that we'll bring you more and more awesome content on this YouTube channel. If you're new to uh, the TLT uh, TLTPG's YouTube oh, channel, you no, you I caught myself. You started it. I, I started it, but I caught myself. The TLTPG. You fucked up. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, definitely subscribe. You know, comment down below, you know, what's your thoughts about Ultra Sun and Moon War? Uh, why is it that you still play Pokemon to this day? How old are you? When did you get started with Pokemon? And have you had any experience with Draft Leagues? Or is Draft League something that you want to be a part of? Just let us know. Like, seriously. But uh, before we head out, any last comments, gentlemen? No, if, you're a, if you're a player, if you're a player, hit that like button. If you're, <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 if yeah, <laughs> if you all play, <laughs> if you guys want to know what that is, go check. If you guys want to know what that is, go check out Blazing Squid and just watch. Just skip to the end of his videos. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> What is, who does he play this week? Uh, he plays um he plays Brandon. Oh, so so yeah, but that's if you, and if you're a hater of Squid Nation, buy a one way trigger to a train station or something. Yes, yeah, so, so, <laughs> <laughs> he has the he has he has the best intro and outro. I swear to God, I love Squid. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the first or not watching, listening to the first uh, Lonely G Cast. Uh, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.